Another way that we can work out how much energy is released in a balanced equation is by carrying out the experiment and measuring how much reactant was used and the amount of energy absorbed or released. As the energy is absorbed or released as heat, we measure the temperature change for a reaction. So the formula we use is enthalpy of reaction equals the energy change for that reaction divided by the number of moles. We can rearrange this equation by putting it into the good old triangle. Because Q is on top of the line, it needs to stay on top of the line in the triangle. That means that the enthalpy of reaction and the number of moles fit down the bottom of the triangle. We add the multiply and division signs, and then we are good to use the triangle to carry out our calculations. So for example, if we wanted to find the enthalpy of reaction, we just block it out as well as the symbol or the sign next to it, so the times. We then go energy change divided by number of moles. So we're just following the triangle to work out the new formula. If we wanted to find the energy change for the reaction, we would block out the energy change as well as the divided by symbol next to it. And then we would go enthalpy of reaction times number of moles. And then finally, if we wanted to find the number of moles in the reaction, we need to block that out as well as the time symbol next to it. And then we would go energy change divided by enthalpy of reaction. So firstly, we will look at how to calculate the enthalpy of reaction or the delta RH. So in this reaction, three kilograms of ethanol burns and releases 81,200 kilojoules of energy. So the first thing to do is check the mole ratios in the equation. We are told the amount of ethanol, so we need to know the number of moles of ethanol. This is important because the enthalpy of reaction tells us the amount of energy absorbed or released according to the mole ratios in the equation. So if there is more than one mole, we would need to adjust our answer. So in this example, there is one mole of ethanol because there is no number in front of the ethanol. So we know it's just one mole. So the first step is to work out the number of moles of ethanol. As we are only given the mass and the molar mass, we need to use another equation to convert it into moles. And the equation we use is number of moles equals mass, which we are given over molar mass. In this equation though, the mass needs to be in grams because the unit for molar mass is grams. Per mole. So we need to convert 3 kilograms into grams. So 1 kilogram is 1,000 grams. So 3 kilograms, 3 times 1,000 is 3,000 grams. We then divide this by the molar mass, which we are always given, which is 46. And so in this experiment, there was 65.217 moles of ethanol burnt. So the second step now is to calculate the enthalpy change of the reaction. So for one mole of ethanol, how much energy would be released? And so we know we have 65.217 moles, and that amount released 81,200 kilojoules. So we now use our second formula, which is the one from this triangle. So if we cover the enthalpy of reaction, we've got amount of energy divided by number of moles. So in this case, it's 81,200 divided by 65.217. And that gives us 1,245 kilojoules per mole. Our final step with enthalpy change is to work out whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic, 
And so whether we need a positive or negative sign in front of our enthalpy change. So in this reaction, we are told that energy is released and therefore it's an exothermic reaction. Another way to work out enthalpy change of reaction is to go energy of the products minus energy of the reactants. In this case, the reactants would have more energy because they released energy during the reaction. And so therefore, the enthalpy of reaction is going to be negative, and we need to put a negative in front of our answer. As there is only one mole in the balanced equation, the enthalpy of reaction doesn't need to be changed. We don't need to do any further calculations. And so our answer is negative 1,245 kilojoules per mole. In question two, we are looking at the total energy released or gained in an experiment where 70 grams of water decomposes into oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. We are given the mass of the water and the balanced equation shows that there is one mole of water and that absorbs 286 kilojoules of energy to break down into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Note that the formation of half a mole of oxygen absorbs 286 kilojoules. What that means is if you had one mole of oxygen, that would absorb 572 kilojoules as it's double the amount of moles of oxygen in this balanced equation. So that's why it's important to always check the mole ratios in the equation because sometimes you'll need to change the enthalpy of reaction. But in this case, we just have one mole of water and one mole absorbs 286 kilojoules per mole. So the first step again is to calculate the number of moles for the species you're given, which in this case we're given the mass of water, so we need to calculate the number of moles of water. So to use this again we're using number of moles as mass, 70 grams, divided by molar mass, which is 18 grams per mole. And that means in this reaction, we have 3.88 moles of water decomposing. Again, the second step is now to calculate the energy absorbed in the reaction. So this is where our second equation comes in. And so this time we're trying to find Q. So we have enthalpy of reaction times number of moles. Our enthalpy of reaction is 286 times 3.88, and that means the energy absorbed in this reaction is around 1,111 kilojoules. We do not have a positive or negative sign for Q, and this is always the case. And that's because Q, or energy change, is looking at how much energy was absorbed or released in a specific reaction. You can't have negative energy, and so we don't put a sign in front of the value when we're working with energy change or Q. You can write absorbed or released after your answer instead, if you wish. So the third type of question is finding the mass of one of the species in the reaction. So for this example, we are calculating the mass of sulfur burned when 740 kilojoules of energy is released. And again, we have our balanced equation, and it shows that for one mole of sulfur, 296 kilojoules per mole, or 296 kilojoules of energy is released. So we need to work out how much sulfur we need to release 740 we know that our answer is going to be more than one mole because one mole releases 296 kilojoules and here we have released 740 kilojoules. So we've released more energy than what one mole could produce. We need to work out again the number of moles of the sulfur. 
but for when we're working out mass it's a little bit different we still use the same two formulas but this time we switch those formulas around or the order that we use those formulas around so in this question we've been given q and we've been given delta rh so we can straight away put it into this formula to work out our number of moles we can't use mass divided by molar mass because we're trying to work out mass so here we've got 740 kilojoules divided by 296 and that gives us two and a half moles and we knew that our number of moles had to be more than one and it is in this case so we can be pretty confident we're on the right track the second step then is to find the mass of the species so this is where we use mass equals n times molar mass or big m so we've just switched the order of these two formulas around so our number of moles was two and a half times our molar mass which is 32.1 and our mass is 80.3 grams so in your exam you will be asked to find either q delta rh or n so energy change, entropy of reaction, or number of moles. But most likely you're going to be asked to either calculate energy change or enthalpy of reaction. That's what usually tends to come up. But make sure you do know how to calculate all three and how to use this triangle. So finally, in our very last example, we are looking at one where there is more than one mole of species in the balanced equation so here we have 125 grams of hexane burning in excess oxygen and the balanced equation shows that two moles of hexane release 8116 kilojoules of energy there's an added step if we don't have one mole of our species in the balanced equation So the first thing we need to do is work out how much energy would be released if we had one mole of hexane. So for two moles of hexane, 8,316 kilojoules of energy is released. That means if we only had one mole of hexane, half the amount, as we do in this balanced equation, we would have half the amount of energy released. So 8,316 divided by two, is 4,158 kilojoules of energy released for one mole. After this step, now we can just go straight back to what we were doing in our previous examples. Second step in this case is to find the number of moles of hexane burnt using n equals little m divided by big M. So 125 grams divided by 86 grams per mole and we have 1.45 moles of hexane burnt in this experiment and now we can find the amount of energy released in the reaction by going enthalpy of reaction times number of moles just remember that we can't use this value here we need to know enthalpy for one mole because we're then going to times it by the number of moles we actually have. So our enthalpy of reaction for one mole was 4,158 times the number of moles we actually had. And our energy released in this example was 6,029 kilojoules. And remember, we don't have a positive or a negative sign in front of that value, but we could write 6,029 kilojoules of energy released if we wanted to. In the download section, you will find a worksheet that has some examples for you to practice with, as well as the answers for you to have a look at once you've attempted all of the questions.